Hi, this is Chris Edgerly. I voice Eat Hawk in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to the Wolf Pack CCMM Podcast. All right, well, I'll just real quickly introduce everybody. we got got um, two uh, guests who aren't usually on our shows. That's uh, Miles and Caleb. They have their own podcast, but because uh, uh, some of our members couldn't make it. So if you guys want to say hey, hi. Guys. Um, hey, how's it going? Good. How are hey, you Chris. Doing? Thanks so much for hey. letting us come on. Thanks. Sure, my pleasure. And then, of course, we have uh, Marco. What's up, everyone? And then, Thanks of course, for coming on, Chris. Hey, no very, problem. Oh, sorry. <laughs> our very special guest. Uh, Chris Edgerly, he is the voice of Eth Koff on Star Wars The Clone Wars. So How's it going? That is pretty awesome. It's going good. Um, how about you? Uh, great. Just enjoying my Saturday. I'm uh, DVRing my, uh, my college alumni, uh, but my, my, uh, my college football team's game, so I got it on pause right now. Oh, very cool. Yeah. All right, I guess I'll begin with my question. Um, my first question is... Uh, how was it like to work on the Clone Wars? Who did you get to work with, uh, and how do you like playing your character? Oh. Oh, what is it? Um. Are you there? Yeah. 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 Uh, no, it was a lot of fun. It was a few years ago, so uh, it's hard to remember all the details, yeah. but... Um, yeah. I was not able to record with the rest of the cast. They would usually record together, but um, I just had a scheduling conflict. So I recorded uh, with uh, Dave Filoni directing me, mm-hmm. and uh, I was just there by myself in the uh, in the studio. So it was uh, it's it's how a lot of voiceover sessions go. Is you sometimes record by yourself, but it was still a lot of fun. It was a really cool character, and uh, even though it was just one episode, you know. Um, I uh, I still really enjoyed myself. You know, it was always cool to be a Jedi. Oh yeah, definitely, and uh, a key a key Jedi. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. I um, uh, I you know, you never really know how the how the story is going to unfold when you're recording your part of it. Yeah, but you know, yeah, he had at least one epic lightsaber battle. I'll say that. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and now I'll let Marco ask your question. Yeah, I just had a quick question. Whoop! It says uh, on your IMBD page that you're on It's a Trap. Uh, what, what characters yeah. did you do on that? Actually, just the one, oddly enough. Um, I did, uh, I believe that was Dr. Smith when uh, they had their one lost in space joke. I think uh, somebody said something the equivalent of uh, fire at will, and uh, they hit will from a Lost in Space, and I was Dr. Smith. I know. And I <laughs> that was pretty funny. Said yeah. something to the effect of, oh, William. You know, it's just, it's one of uh, Seth MacFarlane's very quick pop culture references, and if you blink, you miss it. Right. You know, but, yeah, that was my that was my one dipping my toe into the family guy world. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I'll let Caleb ask his question. Okay, so my question is, um, your species you play in the Clone Wars is Zabrak, and uh, as we all know, Darth Maul is also a Zabarek. Uh, why do you think that uh, Eth Koth looks so much different than Darth Maul and actually has hair? Yeah, who knows? You know, maybe it's just an aesthetic choice that uh, they made. Sometimes, you know, you'll notice this in, in a lot of uh, characters in movies. They'll give them a specific look visually because it hints at what's inside. And that I, I can't say anything other than it might have just been an artistic choice. I, I am not uh, as up on the arcana of that universe, so there might be a more specific reason. You know, George Lucas never does anything by accident, so there might be a specific reason why Cloth has hair and, um, and Maul doesn't. But my guess is that it's just an aesthetic choice. Yeah, and it's, um, it's just a Yeah. Yeah, we like visit a whole like village of the species, and none of them even like resemble them. They all look more like Maul, but I think that on Maul those might be tattoos. Could be, could be. You know, again, um, there there are those that would know much more than I would. So I I could only hazard a guess. All right, all right, uh, Miles, your question. Are you there, Miles? Uh, uh, Miles may have lagged out. Yeah. All right. I'll ask. Uh, I guess I'll ask my other question. It, it says on uh, 
IMDb that you uh, voice additional voices and the movie TMNT. Uh, what what voices were uh, that did you voice? Uh, that was actually that was another one we did a few years ago. Um, I think I was a, a monster here and there. A lot of monster fights in that movie. I think I was also maybe a mugger near the beginning of the movie. <laughs> oh. You're in there and you, you just record different things and they throw them together. And then afterwards you think, was that me? I can't remember. Was that you or was that me? You know, you're seeing it with your voiceover buddies and sometimes we don't even know. You know, mm-hmm. it's hard to remember. So, yeah, I'd have to go back. Jeez, that movie came out in... Uh, 2007, yeah. Oh, seven, which means we recorded it probably in 05 or 06, so probably 06, yeah. Um, at, at least a monster and probably also like a, a, you know, like a minor criminal. Right, that's cool. So that's the most I could do for you there on that one. All right, awesome, thank you. And uh, yeah, Marco, your next question? Okay. Um, I just want to say you have a very like well-rounded, like diverse career and a lot of great stuff on that you have done and worked on. But like, what's your favorite character that you've ever played? Hmm. Well, thank you for the compliment. Um, no I, problem. you know, there are. Uh, I was just. I just did a, a previous interview with uh, Nabil uh, Carrillo. Yeah, uh, we know him. Yeah. He's yeah, our friend. Our friend. Yep. Yeah, and they. We were talking about Hedon in Naruto, mm-hmm. and. I don't think he's my favorite character because he's a despicable human being, mm-hmm. but he was a lot of fun to play because he's so insane. Um, I had a lot of fun doing uh, uh, Peter Potamus for Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, and that's a um, that is a um, um, it's a Cartoon Network series, but it's the um, it's that block of programming. Um, that basically that that nether world of programming that comes on late at night. Oh, I've seen and, up for some of that stuff. Oh yeah, I, I can't remember what they call the block of programming. Uh, adult Swim. Uh, oh yeah, Adult yeah. Swim. It's an Adult Swim show, and it has that sensibility. And I always thought the show was hysterical. And yeah, it, they, I'm a little older than you guys, and it dealt with a lot of uh, characters that you know were popular when I was a kid, and they reimagined them and. Uh, it was a little before my time, but the way they wrote him was he's just this complete, uh, um, uh, somebody basically a, a hedonist in every sense of the word, and he's a hippo, and he's a lawyer, and he's a, and on top of that, a complete idiot, you know? And, <laughs> right. Um, uh, they're yeah. actually playing the Clone Wars episodes on Adult Swim now. Oh, are they? Cool. Yeah, uncut. Yeah. Uncut. Uh, did you hear about the the cancellation of the Clone Wars? Yeah, I read a little bit about it. Um, I also have some friends who are really deep in that world, and uh, you know, I, there's a general sense of disappointment and surprise. But um, you know, uh, something else is going to come of that universe, and so I, those characters will just simply land elsewhere in some other project. You know. Right. And, you know, it's not like they're not going to tell any more Star Wars stories. They just aren't going to tell them in that particular fashion. Mm-hmm. So that's, I, I guess that's the way you kind of have to look at it because I don't think it's coming back. Right, right. Definitely. I mean, the only thing so far that we know of is, uh, of course, the bonus content, which is extra episodes that they're going to be showing. And Rebels is coming next year. Yeah, and Rebels. So yeah, I don't, summer. yeah, I don't think you're ever going to have to... To worry about not having enough content, mm-hmm. but it's not always going to take the form that we want, you know. And and um, the universe will continue, but some stories will just change, you know. They'll just change how they tell them. Right, definitely. Um, the Clone Wars will be missed, but yeah, I totally agree with that. I'm sure Rebels is going to bring the same excitement. Um, would you be if you were to get like you know a call for Rebels? Would you be interested in actually you know voicing a character in Rebels? Sure. You know, it's a really cool universe. I mean, I was around for the first Star Wars. I was around for episode four. You know, as an eight-year-old, I saw it in the theater, so I grew up with it. You know, it's, it's, it's practically Disney for me, which is odd, seeing as how they're all, you know, one big family now. So, um, yeah, I'd love to. You know, anything that comes along, it'd be great to be a part of it. Definitely. All right, Caleb, I'll let you ask your next question. 
Oh uh, yeah, you uh, your character actually got an action figure and a Lego minifigure. So like, whenever you're walking through the stores, did you ever pick any of those up or look at them and see how cool it is that you're one of the characters that you brought to life actually got a toy? Yeah, I actually have never seen it. You know, I know it's out there, but um, uh, I've never grabbed one. So I should uh, I should hit a Toys R Us and see if I can find one. You know, or or maybe Amazon. But yeah. I've I've got a closet full of stuff, and uh, I've yet to add that. But it's cool. There's no doubt about it. It's always nice to be an action figure. Yeah, you got a Lego minifigure and action. Figure. I've actually got both of them. I got the uh, action figure to Acme uh, for like ten bucks, and it's really cool. Yeah, well, I gotta grab one. Um, you know, one of these days. Yeah. Yeah, those are that actual action figure is kind of becoming a little rare at this point. Yeah, um, it's pretty rare now. Yeah, the the best place to actually find it would be Amazon since it's. It came out in 2011, so you won't be able to find it in stores these days. Yeah. Shadows of the Dark Side. Yeah, I think I'll have to hit up my buddy. Um, I, yeah, and uh, it. I think that usually happens with characters that are a little more obscure. You know, I think you're probably not going to have to look too far to find a, an Obi-Wan figure, but yeah. uh, Heath Koth is just, you know, just not, yeah, he's you in one. right. Yep. Yeah. You know. That's pretty much the way it is. Unless it's like one of those extremely popular characters, like uh, say right. Boba Fett. Right. right. Then like yeah. it's going to be mostly obscure characters that become rare. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Marco, your next question. Um, can you come back to me? Yeah. Sure. I'll have one. Um, one of my other questions is: uh, Are you working on any projects? Any projects coming up or? Yeah, there's always a little something in the pipeline. I um, worked on a video game yesterday, but of course, we're never allowed to talk about them. Uh-huh. Uh, the uh, I did mention this to the uh, to Nabil and his buddy. Um, I Logan. Uh, yeah, Logan, uh, both out of Orlando. Yeah, uh, we just um, we finished uh, the second season of Dragons: Riders of Burke, based on. Um, how to Train Your Dragon. We finished that last year, but they're ready to air now. The new episodes are going to be airing. I think they've already started, but uh, there'll be a second season of 20 episodes, and I am I do the voice of Gobber for that series, so I'm really proud of that. And um, there's another show that'll be coming out next year on Cartoon Network called Clarence, and it's completely different in tone. Uh, it's created by a guy named Skylar Page, and... Um, that's uh, it's a show about an eight-year-old boy as the main character, and he's. Uh, um, I just have done some uh, some guest voices on two or three episodes, but it's a really sweet show, and it's still very funny, but it's got a completely different sensibility, and I was I was proud of that, but I don't think that's out until uh, probably um, early next year. Okay, so those are the those are the two things in particular, but Dragons is probably airing right now. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Um, and then, how was it working or doing the voice of Aragorn in Lord of the Rings? That one was really fun. That was also going back a few years. I think that was back around uh, 03, 03 or 04, I think. Um, we uh, uh, Obviously, we've all seen the movies, and they were great. And I loved Viggo Mortensen, but he just wasn't available to do it uh, for uh, Return of the King for the video game. Uh -huh. So they auditioned for people who could, you know, voice match him, and I was able to uh, to get that. And um, for that, they flew me up to uh, Redwood City, uh, where EA is based, and they had, you know, they had me record there in person instead of um, uh, phone patching it, which they do an awful lot. And so for that, it was pretty involved. And then I've done them for a couple of other games since then, but uh, you know. That's that's another you know you're part of a completely different universe, but one is that is just as revered. So it was a pleasure. Very cool, uh, Caleb. Your next question. Oh, okay, my next question is: uh, Whenever you were recording for the character Ethcoth, were you in the same room as other voice actors, such as Matt Wood, uh, who played General Grievous, or and or were you just like in a room uh, alone recording? Yeah, for that one, I was alone. Um, I had worked on something else earlier in the day that uh, happened while they were recording the rest of the cast, so I had to record that one uh, by myself. But I had uh, Dave Filoni there directing me to keep me honest. So, you know, would have liked to have recorded with everybody else, but sometimes the schedule just doesn't allow for it. 
So is it harder doing it alone or harder doing it with other actors? It's probably, you know, it's not that it's harder doing it alone because, you know, you have your imagination, but um, it, it's more fun doing it with others. You know, you just play off them a little more naturally. You know, you can still give a good performance on your own, but it's, um, it's just a little bit more enjoyable when you get to connect with other actors in the same room. And right. you can, like, bring your emotions out easier. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's just a little more, I guess it's, it probably is in some way a little easier, but I don't want to think that guys who have to record on their own are at a, are at a huge disadvantage because, you know, we're actors and we're paid to use our imagination, so we've gotten pretty good at it. Definitely. Uh, Marco, are you ready for your next question? Yes. Like, what are some other uh, voice actors or, like, where do you draw your inspiration from when you have to play a certain character? You know, usually it is just as I was saying. It's mainly out of your imagination. Plenty of voice actors I admire. Some of them are good friends of mine. You know, guys like Fred Tattashore and Nolan North and um, uh, James Arnold Taylor. You know, uh, I think John DiMaggio is great. Uh, you know, they're just there are tons of people you could name, but you don't want to really copy what they do. You know, you can certainly be inspired by it when they do really good work, but. Um, you know, you uh, you just draw from your own life, you know, from what's in your head, mm -hmm. and uh, that's usually enough. Cool. Very cool. Um, alrighty, my next question is, if there was another character you could play in the Clone Wars, who would it be and why? Oh, I, you know, I think, I think it'd be really cool to be, uh, to be any other Jedi, you know, because I, I think they're probably would be my favorite characters. People always mention villains. The villains are fun to play. I just think Jedis are cooler, you know. So if you if you threw any other Jedi at me, you know, I think I'd have a lot of fun. You know, those were, when you're a kid, you're growing up and you're playing, you know, if you're going to play um, uh, intergalactic cowboys and Indians, then, you know, you're going to be a Jedi and... And because uh, those are the good guys and those are the cowboys, you know. Right. So any of those guys would be fine by me. Very cool. Um, all righty, Caleb, your next question. Um, whenever you went in to record, uh, did you know, how much did you know about the character Eth Koth? I didn't know a whole lot. They always have what they call a character breakdown, which, you know, essentially breaks down the, the, um, the important facets of that of that character and in this case you know you knew he was a jedi and they also hit on how they wanted him to sound they wanted him to have a particular accent that was um indian you know eastern indian but uh but softer you know nothing too cliched or stereotyped they wanted something noble and that's kind of what you keyed on and uh because he's also a very noble character so you know usually you know especially for a character like this um you know, that was more than enough to get me going, and Dave was there to give me a little direction otherwise. But, uh, no, I think um, I think that was really all that was required. So we didn't get to know a whole lot, but they gave me enough. Okay. Very cool. All right, uh, Marco, your next question. Oh. Sorry, you guys have done, like, such a good job asking questions. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, all right. Another one. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this uh, whenever your character like is being tortured by Grievous, they throw him onto the ground, and uh, somehow he has time to do these little hand signals that uh, gives the space coordinates to where he's at. Do you think Ethcliff actually had the time to do that and memorize where the coordinates were? Sure, he's a Jedi. Those guys do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I you know sometimes in order to tell the story, you might have to cheat the logistics just a little bit, but I think the general sense of it is is that. He found a way to alert them, and uh, that's how they wanted to visualize it. But I figure if he can, you know, if he can use the force to push Grievous up against, uh, you know, the glass at the far end of the room without touching him, he could do a few hand signals too. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll grant him that. I'll suspend my disbelief enough for that. He just, like, pushed Grievous against the wall. You can't touch this. And... Exactly. So, I mean, if so, he can do that, he can do anything, really. Or why not? <laughs> um, my next question is, uh, so you've probably obviously seen all the Star Wars movies. Um, how do you rank them from a uh, one to six? You know, what what order would you give them that you know from greatest to least? Well, 
I have to say, uh, hang on just a second. Let me turn the uh, sound down on my TV real quick. You guys give me a second? Sure, that's fine. I bet he's going to say Phantom Menace last. <laughs> yeah, I've heard a lot of Phantom Menace last. Pretty much everybody puts that one last. Yeah. It's not really all that bad of a movie, though. Yes, it's not that bad of a movie, but it's not the best it's, movie. The reason it's bad is because it's missing clones. That's it. <laughs> right. And, of course, uh, we even got... But, I mean, it's cool because it's the only movie where the battle droids actually seem like a military force. Right. In the rest of it, it seems like Google Wolf. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. I'm back. All right. Um, I would say I would put Empire Strikes Back as number one. Yes. Yeah. I would say Star Wars uh, New Hope number two, Jedi number three, uh, Phantom Menace four, Attack of the Clones five, and um, um, man. Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, um, yeah, I would say uh, episode three, probably the one that I liked the least. It wow. just, uh, wow. yeah, it you know, keep in mind I grew up with the first trilogy, right? right. And, um, those to me are the best, and I think Empire is the best of the three. Well, my Empire is definitely the best uh, for sure to me, but uh, like I, most people would say that uh, that were fans of the originals really were more disappointed by uh, Phantom Menace. So you rank that one more high than any of those. Why is that? I would simply because I was so happy to see it come back, and I loved the way he was recreating the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I, yeah, I, I don't think they measure up to the first three. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Um, first three meaning the you know four through six, um, but uh, yeah, each one has something to redeem it. But uh, I just think you can't touch uh, Empire. I just think Episode Five is as good as it gets. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm kind of happy. Bring something cool to the table. Oh yeah, I'm I think they got the right got people. Different response. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I think they have the right people working on the new movies, so I think it'll be okay. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool though, that we got a different response because I've never heard anybody put Revenge of Sith last. So it's pretty cool that you know everybody uh, has their own opinion. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I it's think just, I know why I put it last. Which one would you put last? I think I know why you put uh, Revenge last. Why is that? Because General Grievous tortured you in the Clone Wars, and he was in that movie, so you didn't really <laughs> enjoy him seeing him on the big screen. Maybe unconsciously, that's why I did. <laughs> Stop torturing me, Grievous. Yeah, that's right. You're going last on the list. <laughs> Alrighty, Caleb, your next question. Uh, my next question is, whenever you were doing the character, uh, like, did you think that he would uh, be ever be like one of the Jedi to turn bad, or do you always think that he was a good-hearted Jedi? Cough? Yeah. Yeah, I always did. I mean, I, the, the sacrifice he showed, I, I just thought that he would be one of the incorruptible ones. You know, they're, you, know they, you never know what they're going to do with the character, but that would be my impression of him. Yeah. And do you think he died during Order 66? Uh, you know, as far as I know, it, it, um, obviously uh, that's when they're all supposed to go. So I just, I imagine, yeah, but you know, in the back of your mind, you think, nah, he got away. <laughs> yeah, but a few of them did get away. Uh, only the ones that we saw on screen, like, there was a few others that died, but of course. But, like, like through the Star Wars timeline, there's still some Jedi they haven't even concluded yet. Yeah, see, that's why I always go with what I can see on screen. You never know what they're going to do with the rest of the universe. So, um, yeah, well, I'm just, I imagine he's one of those few that slipped through the cracks. Right, right. Um, Marco, your next question? Um, have you watched all the Clone Wars seasons? Actually, no, I've watched very little of it. It's just oh. not something I was able to find time for, especially now with a, with a family. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not able to keep up with it as much. Right, right. Yeah, they uh, their their final season was great for sure. It was. Yeah. Were you well, able to? Oh, go ahead. No, actually, um, I was just gonna agree with you. You know, I I know that people loved it, and I certainly had certainly on Facebook, I got you know, I saw a lot of people talking about it. So I I have to believe they're gonna do something else with a lot of those characters. Mm -hmm. 
definitely possibly tie some of the stories up in the bonus contents what they're saying but so far it looks like it's just bringing more things to tie up right so yeah you know fingers crossed definitely um all right uh caleb your next question okay my next question okay uh i'm gonna have to think on that one for a minute all right sure i, I do have a question um what who is your favorite all time Star Wars character? Um it's a boring answer, but I think I gotta go with Han Solo. Ah, oh, that's a cool answer. It's, it's yeah. definitely an awesome character. Yeah. Sure. You know, I mean he's the one that every guy wants to be like. We don't want to be frozen in carbonite, but you know, all the others. Right. Are cool. Right, definitely. Yeah. Um Now did you know that actually in the Clone Wars they were supposed to kill off your your character Eve Koth on that episode? Yeah. Dave Filoni actually joked with me about that. He said, yeah, we were supposed to kill you this episode, but we're not going to do that. So if we ever bring you back, it'll be to kill you. <laughs> you, know, but, uh, you know, So I figure, well, that's a, it's a double-edged sword. I want to do the show again, but if I do, I have to die in it. So as it's turned, we never had a chance to come back to him. But uh, yeah, right, I was aware right. of that. He was supposed to die, and they just decided we'd rather not do that. Right. Yeah, I mean... Again, you know, like you said, it's possible he survived Order 66 and could possibly make an appearance in... Uh, Rebels. Rebels, yeah. It could happen. Start the uh, start the uh, the campaign now. Start the email campaign, and who knows, that yes. might happen. Yes, definitely. Eve Koth versus Darth Vader. Let's see that. Why not? That would be cool. <laughs> I think that Eve Koth is one of those characters I wish we would have seen more of, because he seems like he... I don't know, he seems like a really great Jedi. I think him and Kit Fisto would make a great team. They would. Definitely. I yeah, feel like there's a I lot of think, mystery. Yeah, that's the thing. You know so little about them, you know, it's kind of fun to imagine what else there might be. Right. Definitely. Um, all right, Caleb, your next question? Okay, my next question is, uh, your character uh, actually appears in the Lego uh, Star Wars video game, and in that game, rather than being tortured, he was, like, wanted coffee the entire game, but he couldn't get it because Grievous took it away from him. So, like, why do you think they did that in the game rather than doing the uh, the torturing scenes? Well, it's it's Lego. Maybe they figured the uh, demographic might be a little younger. Oh, you know? uh, yeah, that makes sense. Let's Take leave it. out the torturing. <laughs> you know, right. that'd be my guess. Right. Um. Now, did you voice East Koth in Lego Star Wars? Um. You know, I honestly, uh, I can't remember. These things are, you know, some of the stuff happened a few years ago, so I could not tell you. I don't think I know we talked in the game. game. Uh, I, you know, I know in the Lego games they don't always use the same, uh, and a lot of times it's not, um, it's not like they're using, you know, the regular uh, dialogue you're used to hearing. So I, uh, I'm going to have to say I actually do not know. Right. That's, yeah, I can, uh, I can imagine, you know, it's. It's probably been a while since then, so... It has. It's tough to sort of... Um, I have to plead ignorance on some things because I just, you know, it's hard to remember, right. you know? Because in addition to the animation stuff I do, there's also commercial work and things like that and just sort of gets mixed up in my head. Right, right. Well, um, Caleb, do you have any other questions? Anybody have any final questions? I believe that's all my questions. Alrighty then. Uh, we know you have a, a time schedule, Chris. So we really appreciate you taking the time to come on our podcast, and uh, hope to talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Great, it's my pleasure, guys. Hope that was of uh, some help to you. Oh, it was awesome. Thank oh, you right. so Thanks. much for coming Thank on. You Thank you much. so much. Yeah, sure. Find me on Facebook anytime. For sure. All right, Chris. All right. Take care. May the force be with you. And you. See you later. Yeah. Alrighty. Alright, did you 